Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of the Chicago soybean complex. I'll start with Chicago soybeans themselves. The recent action continues, more or less, to be captured within the two explosive days ranges back in late February between 1579 to 1759. Since then, despite an initial but now defunct bull channel, the market edged lower in a two steps up and three steps down action, such that at the start of April, we saw a test and breach of the support 1579 to 1571, and prices briefly tested down to 1560. Now, this two steps up and three steps down action had left the door open for the late February to early April period to be a descending triangle pattern. First things first, before I go any further, this descending triangle is by no means a perfect example, but there are significant elements there that make the action look a viable opportunity. Next, we actually have two descending triangles one inside the other. One triangle from late February until the start of April, with that drop down to 1560 being a false break lower, and one triangle from late February until mid-April, which now includes the drop as part of the pattern. Now, a bit of information about descending triangles. Firstly, descending triangles can break in either direction, acting as a topping action as well as a continuation pattern. This one in question has seemed to be a possible upward continuation action. It, it, indeed, in general, descending triangles that see a market rising beforehand, such as we've had here, have something like a six or seven times out of 10 chance of breaking higher. Hence, I've previously placed some targets on the top side, an initial, initial primary potential target X on the top side for the smaller descending triangle pattern is in the 1757 area, right where the 50% uh, projected Fibonacci level res resides. A further secondary target X1 would be in the 1810 area. If instead we take a look at a larger descending triangle pattern here, here we would have an initial target X2 in the 1780 area with a harder secondary target X3 in the 1844 area. These last two targets would tie in with something I've already spoken about 10 weeks ago and repeated since. I spoke about three simultaneous long-term patterns I'd seen over the middle and end of last year and going into this year. They are all bullish and they are a rounded bottom, a large cup with handle pattern and a scallop pattern. To be honest, it's, it has been a bit disappointing to see no real attempt at trying for any of these longer-term targets, pattern targets topside. See, the round and bottom still has a primary topside target in the 1983 area, which is off the top of my daily chart right now. The next one is the large cup with handle pattern, which has a primary target in the 1910 area. Once again, this is off the top of my daily chart. Finally, the scallop pattern, or to be accurate, the ascending scallop pattern, this has a primary target in the 1836 area. Until recently, off the top of my daily chart, and interestingly, the one I have the least confidence in, even if it is the nearest. You can see it labelled as target X with a question mark. These are all, as I've stressed repeatedly, way out there. But as I've seen plenty in recent times, lots of things that are way out there can suddenly happen. All this is not unusual to anyone watching or listening to my commentaries. However, what we m have seen over the last five weeks or so has not been a move higher nor have we seen the market treating the break higher as a false break and turning prices back down sharply. What we have seen instead is a slightly lower but basically sideways action. Thus, this threatens all the descending triangle patterns and we may instead be forming something else completely. And this may be in a form of long-term in construction bearish pattern or it may be in the form of a rectangle pattern. At this moment, I'm not sure which if Eva is undergoing the construction right now. I'd like to finish off once again on something I originally said in my annual review on soybeans made at the very start of 2022. Back then I was only looking at long-term charts and I quote, one other idea I would like to try, let's say provisionally float by you, it is a way early on, it's way early on this, 
but it should be worth considering it is to look at the whole of the 2020 today action as a possible bullish halfway hesitation in which case we might have i say might with due deference here we might have a possible target x topside in the 20 and a quarter area i'll just repeat that in the 20 and a quarter area this is way way up off the top of my long-term chart and it might sound ridiculous now indeed it does sound ridiculous but it is what i see and i'd rather say it and maybe look ludicrous and even laughable now than be silent and be confirmed as an idiot who should have said something should it come about anyway this is a multi-month and likely a multi-year potential target x so there ought to be plenty of time plus it will all depend on what the market does when and if it meets the 2021 high at 1667 and the 2012 high at 1789. End of quote. This bigger picture idea done at the start of 2022, yeah, that's when I did it, start of 2022, nearly six months ago, is still there despite the recent daily actions. Chicago soybean meal. I said here four weeks ago that we had the potential for the late January day action being one of two patterns the second of these two patterns was to look at the action throughout most of 2022 as a topping action specifically a head and shoulders top for split head it's not a perfect pattern but is it is a workmanlike head and shoulders top four weeks ago the market breached and closed below the neckline currently for 447.20 and triggered the pattern which subsequently fulfilled all the opportunities primary and secondary on the downside now, a significant part of the erosion of the move low once prices achieved their targets, their downside targets, was the market's reluctance to test the slowly rising long moving average below, currently 393.90, and also to try down for the 50% Fibonacci line at, for 2021 to March 2022 move at 389.10, despite breaking an earlier 50% Fibonacci line at 40050. However, prices did recover back up late last week, but since then, at these high levels, around the lesser Fibonacci lines at 413.30 and 422.20, the market has started now to exhibit not intraday indecision, but interday indecision. You see, since the start of this week, Monday was a key reversal down, Tuesday was an immediate countering bullish harami, and yesterday was a counter to the counter bearish harami and outside day. So you can see lots of interday indecision. The resistance on the top side, which had been surprisingly effective on a two consecutive close basis, is congestion at 422 even, which is just being popped at the moment. Whilst below, the previously mentioned 413.30 support has now been bolstered, at least temporarily, by the declining short moving average, currently 413 even. On the upside, beyond the 422 level, which we have just literally Passed pass through, though we're not yet close through it. We next have resistance at the early April 2021 high and congestion area plus highs from January and February last year, all at 4.33 and a half. However, the first real test upside will be at the flatlining medium moving average, currently at 4.39.10, and the nearby April 2021 high at 4.39.30. Thus, it seems as if the head and shoulders top has played out its hand right now, and we wait to see what the next pattern construction will be. Chicago Soybean Oil. Of all the Chicago Soybean Complex, the landscape of Chicago Soybean Oil and this daily chart has changed, in my opinion, by far the most. Initially, after the change gap in March, the market worked its way higher, filling in the change gap itself. However, the previous all-time high back in 2008 at 72.67 managed to temper, though not halt the rise until nearly mid-April. Indeed, the June high at 68.97, another relic from those days, stopped the subsequent fall. Thus, it was those 2008 levels that captured the recent market until mid-April, when the market punched up through the 2008 based overhead resistance and up to test the levels seen back in early March and even higher. This was an extended rally that saw prices move up over the 50% projected Fibonacci line at 81.23, moving even higher until four weeks ago when a bearish engulfing pattern, if, if only just, a bearish engulfing pattern managed to cap the market and start a subsequent decline. The market tried to recover, 
but suffered a blow two weekends, weekends ago for changeover gap that started a further drop. Prices last week started resting on the first significant level of support, the slightly rising short medium moving average, currently 76.47. And that's just above the 50% Fibonacci line of the February to April move at 75.24. And that's a level the, uh, the short mediums want to remember. We've also got the nearby soon to join them short medium moving averages of support as well. Um, Mid December 2021 uptrend as well, currently at 76.05. The short medium is currently trading at 76.47. A couple of weekends ago, I put, oh sorry, a couple of weeks ago, I put forward some ideas on what patterns may have been developing at that time. My favorite back then was to look at the mid-December 2021 today action being a very large bullish halfway hesitation. The reason for my favoring of this last idea was something I had pointed out a few times beforehand. It was the lagging indicator of three, yes, three golden crosses over February and March that produced enough of an impetus that this bullish halfway hesitation, half hesitation pattern idea looked likely as a pattern. However, even I admitted that this was a hell of an ask. And last week, I also admitted that this pattern was no longer feasible. It all now depended, as I said last week, on what will happen in the area of the short medium moving, age, moving average, plus the December 2021 today uptrend and the 50% Fibonacci line, all of which I'd previously mentioned. This will dictate what likely actions and patterns may be coming next. Well, over the past two weeks, we've had, including today, we've had three and a half attempts lower and six attempts higher. None of them successful. Two of these sessions were also indecisive patterns, a doji cross and a spinning top. It is today that might, just might prove interesting. As with today's action so far, we are on the verge of a combined key reversal up and bullish engulfing pattern, if only just on the latter. If we close tonight over 77.96, then we will have a daily key reversal up. And if we close between just over 77.75, but below 77.95, then we will have a combined outside day and bullish engulfing pattern as well. This is... This is one really to watch today as the close is super important and may be a precursor for further movements. Finally, I will only ask you to be reminded of one thing, something I pointed out the last few times at the end of my commentaries usually. In April, we had a monthly key reversal up. This is part of a longer term pattern, but it is still very, very noteworthy. Thank you for listening. Uh, this weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyrights Eddie Topic and ADM Investors International Limited. And here comes the final bit.